Welcome to another episode of Systems. This is Gaming Insurrection Editor-in-Chief, Lindsay Beatty. And in this issue's Systems, we are looking at one of my favorite fighting games ever released. Uh, it's a it's a long-standing critical darling uh, created by Capcom. And it involves Street Fighter, of course, because that's their main flagship fighting game series. And so... Uh, this is Street Fighter Alpha 3, which of all of the Alpha games, Alpha 3 is the one that I played the most and that I did the most in and that I enjoyed the most and that I traveled around playing uh, other people. And I, I've actually played it in the arcade. I had the home version for a long time. I've, I've, I actually have the Street Fighter Alpha collection uh, for PS2. So... We also have reviewed Street Fighter Alpha 3 recently in Gaming Insurrection, and it got a five-star review, 5.0 5 review from us. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty safe to say we love Street Fighter Alpha 3 around these parts. So I decided to do something about the systems of Street Fighter Alpha 3. And so here we are. So I decided that um, we were going to... Um, do something with this because, well, everyone should play Alpha 3 and learn how the system works because certain things that are in Alpha 3 are um, spread out in other Capcom games, other Capcom fighting games, um, and most notably World Tour Mode, which was a home edition for Alpha 3, um, starting with the PlayStation version of the game. Um, it is now being... Uh, celebrated again and done again in Street Fighter 6. So I thought this would be an excellent time to go back because Street Fighter 6 is now out um, and look at Alpha 3 and uh, the things it has to offer and see how much is carried over to modern day Street Fighter. So here we are. Um, so here we are. We are on the main menu for the home version, the PlayStation 1 version of Street Fighter Alpha 3. It has a, 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 a very lovely intro. I actually really love it. I've grown very fond of it over the years, but uh, I just decided to start recording once we got to uh, the, the main menu because this has a lot of options and this is some of the things we talked about in the print version of Street Fighter Alpha 3. So um, there are, once you unlock all of the different modes, you have uh, at least, let's see, I think there's 10, 10 options on this uh, menu. Most of them are um, modes that you can go fight in. Um, some of these have to be unlocked. Some are available from the beginning. So we're going to start with the top where uh, we're at arcade mode. Uh, arcade mode is exactly what it says it is. It is the arcade mode of Street Fighter Alpha 3, except there are uh, home versions characters that have been added here uh such as evil ryu uh guile um t hawk fei long dj uh juni julie um and shinakuma once you unlock him also balrog balrog is a is a home version only um most of the older uh world warriors were available from the beginning but gal was not uh, this was more focused on Charlie and his story. So Guile was a was a home edition only, uh, and you can unlock him in various ways, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, you can unlock the characters various ways here, but uh, once we get down to World Tour mode, we'll talk about how you unlock those. So here in Arcade mode, you're going to run through and you're going to get uh, rival battles. You get your character's story. You get your character's ending. Um, and you fight uh, 10 or 11 battles, um, and it's it's the arcade ladder, and it is exactly the way it is in the arcade, except for those ad additional characters. Uh, then we move down versus mode. Uh, this is your standard two-player head-to-head uh, -head mode where you fight against another player. Um, I do believe you can turn versus mode into uh, versus computer if you turn it on in the options. I think... I think this is one of the Capcom games that you can do that in, um, which is helpful 
if you don't have somebody else to play against. However, this mode is not going to be enabled unless you have a second player controller plugged in, and I do have one plugged in right now, so uh, that's why this is available. Um, then you have training mode. Training mode is important here because, as it says, practice your combos and attacks in this mode. Um, you can you can practice and you can get uh, combo data and test your combos and see how moves work and spacing and it, it, it's not as detailed as say later Street Fighter labbing environments. Uh, it, it's kind of bare bones, but you at least get a training mode here. So that's good. Um, it's, it's, it's still a training mode, which was, you know, a step up uh, above Street Fighter 2. Um, but it is helpful here. It is very helpful. Um, world Tour Mode. Okay. So World Tour Mode is, it's an adventure mode, as it says. Build up your character's power in this adventure mode. It's an adventure mode. And you can take any character, once you've unlocked everybody, um, you can... You can take any character through this mode and it's a series of fights against the computer and it's different conditions. So, um, and we're going to talk about the differences between the isms and what, what that means, but certain conditions might be use a certain specific ism only, uh, in order to do damage, um, or guard, you have to guard crush someone, uh, in order to do damage to them. They have to be guard crushed in order for you to do the damage. Um, the whole point of this mode is to build up a character and unlock what are called ism pluses and um, build up a beast of a character. And in the PlayStation version, it goes up to level 32. Um, certain fights you cannot access if you are not a certain level. Um, you can you reach Guile at level 27. So if you are, let's say you're level 26 and you get to, to the fight where Gal appears. If you're not level 27 when it's time to fight that, that, that node on the map, you will not unlock it and your progress will stop. Um, so that's how that works. So you can unlock multiple characters this way uh, if you're good enough here. So you could unlock Gal at 27, Evil Ryu at 31, and Shinakuma at 32 or you can do it by time um, so in options mode you'll see it says overall like play time um, at the very bottom and you can unlock them at, at certain time uh, time requirements so you got to meet a certain number of hours so and we learned this back in the day the trick to doing this is to just leave your system on like if you're going out and doing something just turn TV off, leave the system on and let it run. So like I would go out to um, Frankie's Fun Park, which is an arcade here and go and play Alpha 3 in the arcade and then leave my system on before I left. Um, and it doesn't matter. It can be in the menu here. It can be in the options mode, whatever. Um, and then go back when I got home, go back into to the options mode, see what the time was how much playtime had been run up in the time that I've been gone. And I, that is how I unlocked Shinakuma because at the time I was not getting to level 32 in world tour mode. I didn't understand the game well enough for that. So I remember unlocking Shinakuma at 180 hours. So that was a lot of leaving my system on and going out for like eight, nine hours or whatever, go to the arcade and come back. So yeah, it, and I would leave it on like all all afternoon and all night, and get home at like midnight or something, and see it and then check to see how much time I had. Yeah, that's how we unlocked a lot of that. I unlocked Guile. I'm pretty sure um, doing the normal uh, way of doing it in World Tour mode. So yeah, there was that. Um, I I really enjoyed World Tour mode. I think it's fantastic, and I'm glad to see they brought it back in Street Fighter Six. And it's uh, way more enhanced now. I, I would hope so after 25 years. Um, it is more enhanced and you can do more things and build up your character. And the way you build up your character is much different now. Um, you still do fights and things, but um, I like the way they set this up in Street Fighter VI. So I was glad to see it come back. That was a driving force for me getting the game. Um, so next mode 
is we're going to go down to entry mode. Entry mode is where you take your, it says, register your character to make them available for other modes. Okay, so once you finish your character in World Tour, and you said, let's say you got to level 31, and you uh, you got the Evil Ryu fight, and that's about as far as you're making it, okay? You could then take your level 31 character, doesn't matter who it is, it could be Sagat, it could be, uh, I don't know, Blanca, um, Vega or, um, or M. Bison or somebody. And you want to now use them in other modes besides, uh, just world tour mode. You could, you go into entry mode and this is how you have to do it. You go into entry mode and you register that character and make them available. So you, you tell it to load that character from world tour and then you save it into a slot. And then once you're in that slot, it's um, your characters now available and you'll see them in certain modes where you can pick them um, and you have access to that character that you built up. So I have several on my original memory card. I have several characters that I created in world tour mode that are now registered for other modes. Um, I have a level 32 Rose, a level 32 Ken, a 31 Sagat, a 31 Evil Ryu, um, and I think like a 29 Ryu, um, and then, a, I think a Karen, I did a Karen and I did a, uh, Julie. So yes, I, I had a lot of characters. Um, and I think I did a, an Akuma just messing around, um, getting characters set up and trying to understand how it worked. So, um, yes, I, I played a lot of world tour mode. And entry mode was my friend when I was ready to take that character into other modes. So then we're going to go over to team battle. Um, here you can choose your team and then battle with your friend. So I think team battle is where you have different characters. It's like, um, I want to say it's like the survival where you pick multiple characters and you fight. I don't know. You fight against, like you choose your team. It's exactly what it says. You choose, you choose your team and then battle with your friend. Um, so this requires a second player as well. Um, I've not gone into team battle. I don't think I've ever done team battle in Alpha 3. Um, just because I just never felt like doing it. We always just went into versus mode and that was that. Uh, so I don't know too much about team battle other than what it says here. Um, then we go down to survival. Now survival I did a lot of. I spent a lot of time in training mode, world tour, uh, arcade, and survival, um, and uh, final battle. So we're going we're gonna to get to final battle in a minute. But survival, I stayed a lot in survival mode because I actually enjoy how that worked. Um, in world tour, you, you kind of have something like that. You have a couple of match conditions where you have to fight against multiple people. And so survival, you can do 10, 20... Uh, 30 or 40 and I think 50 is the highest number of characters you can fight it might be 40 we're gonna go into survival and um, for for my demonstration here we're gonna go into survival uh, in a minute and and I will pick and see what the um, what the the main the the massive number you can do but also there is a um, boss rush that I love doing I will go into boss rush and see how far I can get. I have gotten to Shin Akuma at the very end. Um, and I've managed to, I think I've beaten it one time where you do all the bosses in succession. So you're doing all four of the heavenly Kings, um, claw dictator, uh, Sagat and Balrog. Um, and then you fight evil Ryu and you fight, um, I want to say you fight Shinokuma at the very end. Um, I've managed to make it to Shinokuma. Now, I don't think I beat him. <laughs> I think I wound up getting just owned at the very end. <laughs> because by that point, I, I, I kept having to get life back. But, you know, once you're fighting these bosses, it's, it's very hard to get life back. So, yeah, it was hard. But I, I think I've beaten him once. And that was enough for me. But I enjoy doing the boss rush. So I don't think I'm going to do boss rush. I think I'm just going to do like a, um, um, a 10 or a 20 battle or something, but we'll see how many are in there in just a minute. 
So moving to the next mode, we're going to do Dramatic Battle. So Dramatic Battle, this, this originally was a hidden feature in Street Fighter Alpha, uh, the first Alpha game, Warrior's Dream. Um, you fight with your friend against the computer. So what happens is you could do Dramatic Battle, which was Ken and Ryu. Originally, it was just Ken and Ryu um, against Bison like it was in the alpha anime if i'm not mistaken it's the alpha anime where they fight against bison um <laughs> and and as one of my favorite commentators uh who who like watched the video and was talking about it <laughs> said that bison told ken to go meet god <laughs> which was hilarious because i have played a lot of alpha three so it was, and I played a little bit of Alpha, so I knew what I knew what that battle was about. But I'm pretty sure it's in the Alpha anime. But that's where dramatic battle comes from. Um, now you could also do a reverse dramatic battle where you uh, you play as one character and the computer fights against you. It's like two on one. So um, I I can't remember. There's a special code to do reverse dramatic battle. But I very seldom, if ever, do dramatic battle because I don't enjoy it. Um, but And I also don't have too many people to play with these days to do dramatic battle. But it's it's a neat concept um, going after the, the alpha anime. So the next mode and the final one is final battle. You challenge the final boss of the game. Now, this is special because... Certain characters have very specific end bosses. So if you've played through Alpha 3, you will know some most people fight against um, Dictator at the very end of Alpha 3. Okay. So more than likely, depending on who you pick, you're probably gonna most likely fight uh Dictator. Okay, so then if you pick, say you pick Evil Ryu, I think Evil Ryu is one of the few. Evil Ryu his end boss is not going to be Bison. It's not going to be Dictator. It's going to be Shinakuma or Akuma. It's, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's Shinakuma because they have a special intro. So it's very interesting um, it, it, based on who it is that you pick, who they're going to be fighting. So the final battle is exactly what it says. You challenge the final boss of the game, right? So what happens here is you fight this end boss and it's like the last match of the game. And if you lose, you get a game over, you get the bad ending and you get a game over. If you win, you get your character's ending. What I like about Final Battle is um, I use it to test a character's, for me, test a character's worthiness for being able to um, take them into world tour mode. So if I can beat Bison with a character that is not souped up, doesn't have any world tour enhancements, if I can beat a uh, dictator with, with that character, then I can take him into world tour mode. I feel like I'm confident enough I will do well um, in world tour mode with him. And that's how I pick who I want to make characters for. So um, also too, you have to know the trick about fighting Bison and the nine hit 75% damage um, super cycle crusher, final, final bison cycle crusher, which is just super obnoxious and is full screen and does massive damage and you cannot air block against it. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's super, super shadow souped up bison. That is ridiculous. Um, at his full power, shin bison as they called him. So that's what final battle is. But I, I use it as a tool for gauging uh, world tour worthiness, if you will. And then um, in the last option here is option mode. And you adjust your game settings here. And this is where you can go see the play time, total play time and all of that. You can adjust um, your game settings, your controller, uh, saving, auto load, auto saving, all of that. So um, it's useful. It's very useful. <laughs> um and it's helpful being able to gauge the time for uh, how long you've been running your game. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna go to survival. And um, we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to do, see how many there is. We're gonna get in this mode and I wanna see how many uh, 
people you can fight. Okay, so yes, there are also other battles in here too. So this is cool. All right, so you have arcade, which is the arcade. You go through all 32 characters, or 35 characters. You go through all 35 characters um, like you're playing in the arcade. Then you have the original uh, version, which is like the original ladder, and it just, it goes through um, all of the characters in a very specific order. Um, and it's not exactly like the arcade mode. Then, this is the boss rush where you fight the bosses. That's very cool. I, I really enjoy that one. So then I was correct. It's 50. Uh, max is 50 because you can do 10 here, uh, 20, 30, 50, and infinite. Okay. And then if you scroll over, it shows you the rankings. Um, so top three rankings for each. So I don't think I have too many rankings in here. I do have one. Um, there in third for 20 battle, I did, I did it in two minutes, 15 seconds, 35, two, two, 15, 35. Um, and I did all, I managed to make it through all I survived. <laughs> um, and then your 50 battle, um, infinity and then back. So, um, we're going to do a 20 battle. Um, And we're gonna use my souped up Akuma. This is actually Shin Akuma here. And so I want y'all to understand how this works. So now when I pick my world, world tour mode character, I do not have a choice of ism. It is already set to what I set it in, in entry mode. Um, once I registered my character, you can always go back and change it in entry mode. But when you pull it into any other mode in the game, it's gonna be set on this. Whatever you had it set on in entry mode. And then you can choose the different modes. These are different types of modes. I can't change this because it's an entry mode character that I registered. So all of my options are really set. I don't even know why they give you the option to change it because you really can't change it. Um, but I have him set on A-ism. So as I'm playing, I'll try to explain the different uh, isms. So you have three, what are called three isms. Um, the first one is A-ism and it's more like alpha. Um, Street Fighter Alpha. As you can see, my character is also super souped up, so he does massive damage here. Um, I, I like hit them twice with hard attacks and um, heavy attacks, and they died. <laughs> so, um, but the cool thing here is, ooh, I'm glad I ducked that. <laughs> um, the cool thing here is, oop, I got hit. Um, notice that I'm taking a lot of damage too. Um, and then I'm gonna get health back, so. Um, but Aism is based on alpha, and it has a lot of the alpha uh, attributes. Um, uh, you can do super moves and it's three levels. Um, that's important to note. Um, Glad I blocked that dashing upper. <laughs> um, so, um, and see, I had I did a level one super there, so now I have two levels left for uh, for Aism. Note that also my character is level thirty two here. Um, so, Aism is very much like like Alpha. Okay, Vism is like the custom combos found in Alpha two. Um, which I didn't enjoy Alpha 2, so I don't use it often, but it is the, the best mode. It is the, it is the top tier mode in the game. Um, a lot of tournament players who did very well in that, in that tournament environment were, uh, Vism players. And the top tier characters in this are Vism. Um, so you're going to see a lot of Vism, people who know what they're doing, We'll play in Vism. And you'll notice Sodom was Vism here. So, um, yeah, most of the top tier characters, uh, Vism Sodom is top tier. Um, and then you have Exism. So, as you can see, um, Cody is using Exism here. 
exism is and and really we should talk a little bit about vism um vism uh is custom combos and instead of being auto custom combos they're manual custom combos here um so you had to know what you were doing to be very successful with uh vism so that's vism in a nutshell um and you get uh 50 percent and 100 percent of a meter to do what you need to do um um exism was is like more like street fighter 2 it's like it's more like street super street fighter 2 turbo um and i've reached the end 20 wins um exism has the most powerful supers but is out of the three isms is probably the weakest um, so we're going to watch the credits a little bit. Norotaku Funimazu is, has been in, in Street Fighter for a long time. Um, but, um, yeah, Exism is probably one of the, it, uh, it, of the three, is the uh, weakest one in terms of what you can do with it and how successful you can be with it. So, yeah, I most people don't... Um, most people don't use exism and there's very few characters that are very good in exism so most people you'll notice either use aism or vism um i i prefer aism because uh, like i said i don't really care for custom combos too much but the custom combos open up so much in alpha 3 you can do so much with them um i'm just not very good so um yeah it's um yoshiki okamoto uh, executive produced. Uh, he is not with Capcom anymore, as far as I know. Um, but he's like the main person in Street Fighter. Um, so see, I get to put in my initials. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, this is very cool. <laughs> I enjoy playing this so much. Um, I did good. So... We're gonna we're gonna go back and do another ten battle. We'll do a ten battle. Uh, and this time I'll choose my Ken. Um, so uh, it's that's why I, I, most people don't use Exism. So yeah, it's it's very it's knowing what you're doing with these isms and how they work. Is what you need to be most concerned about. Um, also note that my Ken is level 32. Also, a powerful level 32 Ken in this game will absolutely wreck. And Ken is not top tier. As far as I know, Ken is not top tier in this game. But my level 32 Ken wrecks people. So it's it's I I I have always favored Ken in this, and I uh, enjoy playing Ken a lot. I, I will play actually play Ken before I play Ryu. Charlie's pretty good in this, I, I think. Um, I've seen some people do some incredible stuff with Charlie in uh, A-ism and V-ism. Um, just from watching people play online and, and Twitch and, um, you know, other streaming, I've seen some Charlies do some stuff. Armika is actually considered one of the worst characters in Alpha 3. She's not top tier. Uh... And I don't know if that's a bias against grapplers, but um, there are people who do not like Armika and, and will tell you she's not top tier. So there's that. <laughs> there's that. Oh, I'm at 10 wins. Hey, look at that. Survival mode all clear. So... We're not going to watch this again because we've already watched it. If it will let me get through it. I don't think I might have to actually watch it. Oh, no. I don't have to watch it. Okay. Um, so, um, that is what I wanted to talk about with um, Alpha 3. Just give you a brief overview. Um, talk about 
the the the, the, the basics, the overall high level overview basics of Alpha 3 and what is entailed in Alpha 3 and how to play a little bit. Um, it's one of those games you really have to get into and it is very deep and very detailed. Um, you will um, you will find it is very, very, very involved and it has so much going on that it can be overwhelming. Uh, but it is one of my favorite fighting games. If not, I, I actually, it is not my favorite fighting game overall. Uh, but it is very high in our top five. So if you go back and look at the fighting game issue, you'll see. It's in the top five. Um, it, it, is, it is one of the more well-designed and uh, highly intricately crafted fighting games on the market. It also has a fantastic soundtrack. I love Alpha 3 soundtrack, and also for all of you uh, story geeks and all, uh, the lore says that Street Fighter Alpha 3 uh, is the superseding version of Alpha, and that it takes place in uh, the late 80s, mid to late 80s, so it happens between, storyline-wise, between the first Street Fighter and then um, Street Fighter 2, and then um, Street Fighter 4. Yes. So the storyline goes Street Fighter, Street Fighter Alpha 3, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 4, um, or Ultra Street Fighter 4, and then Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition, Championship Edition, and then uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and then um, Street Fighter 6. So Street Fighter 6 is supposed to be modern day. So um, yeah, Alpha <laughs> Alpha takes place supposedly at the very beginning. Um, and it takes place in the 80s. It's, that's how you know that it's, because if it took place between Street Fighter and Street Fighter Al and, and um, Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, that would have been 86. 6, 87, probably 87, and then uh, 94, because that's when um, Super, Turbo, Super Turbo takes place. So, I hope this has been enjoyable. I hope that you have learned a little something about a game maybe you didn't know about before, and that you um, are inclined to play one of the strongest fighting games out there on the market. There's a reason why this has been re-released a million times and upgraded and they keep referring back to the Alpha series. <laughs> it's because of Alpha 3 and how good Alpha 3 was and still is. So I hope that this has been insightful for you and that you have learned something. Uh, come back and listen to us again. We will have another edition of Systems for you to learn a little bit about a game's inner mechanics and its inner workings. This has been Lindsay Beatty, Editor-in-Chief of Gaming Insurrection, and I'll talk to you later.